Here are the controls of your new Skoda Kodiak. So you lock and unlock. You can either unlock once for one door, twice for all of the doors in the boot, lock once to lock an alarm and it folds your mirrors in, lock twice will turn your interior alarm off in case there's anyone inside the car and that will turn your interior alarm off to stop any, uh, any movement from setting that off. Alternatively, you've got your keyless entry. So if you grab the handle and touch the sensor, it opens. Do it again, and that opens all of the doors. Touch the back of the sensor to lock, and then touch it again to deadlock only. Your boot, you can open by pressing the button underneath the, uh, the O on the Skoda or you can press and hold your boot button or there's also a button inside your driver's door which I'll show you in a moment. So press and hold, that'll open your boot. If you want a different height you can set it, press the button and then press it again where you want to set. Press and hold till you hear the beep and then every time you open or close the boot again It'll go to where you've set it and then to override it you just push the boot back up to the top and then press and hold the button until you hear the beeps again and that will set so you've got shopping bag hooks in the back so you don't have to repack everything when you get home you've got your seat belts in the top for the two rear seats which you just pull the levers up at the back then you've got under here, you've got your tonneau cover and you've got your spare wheel and of course you've got your jack kit. Uh, your tonneau cover you just lift this up and then you can take that out and fit it into the, the tonneau piece there. I can fit that in for you if you want while you, uh, when you pick your car up. If you want to pull these seats up, it's always recommended to slide the middle row forward slightly, otherwise you do tend to get a little bit stuck. So if you just pull those forward slightly, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, and then you can just pull those seats up, and then you've got a, a, a catch on the corner here. You just push the catch together, and the seat will fold back down. For your rear seats, you've either got a lever here, which you can pull forward, and that will allow you to slide the seat forward. Oh. There we go. So somebody can get into the rear and that will also allow you to push those rear seats up. And then you slide it back to where you want it and then pull the lever back. You can recline that by either using the lever at the top there or you've got the hoop here. So you can either use this to recline, you just push with your back to where you want this in a position, or if you pull the hoop, that will fold the rear seats down for you. Now you can do that individually. You've got a button on the other side of the middle headrest, or you've got the lever and the hoop on the side of that one to pull both of those front seats down, uh, rear seats down. And you just pull the hoop again, which will release the seat, and allow you to pop it back. And then under the two front edge seats, you've got a bar you lift up and you can actually slide that forwards and backwards for the 60-40 split. Your electric seats, you slide forwards and backwards, up, down, and you can angle the seat as well to give more support under your legs. That's your back angle. And you've got lumbar support, so two buttons will push out and two will pull back in. Once you've stored it where you want it, press and hold set for a couple of seconds, then press and hold the number until you hear the beep. And then if somebody does move your seat, you just press the number and it'll take you back to where you were stored. So you've got automatic lights with this model and wipers. So just leave it on auto, it'll do your side and your main lights. Pull out once for your front fogs, twice for your rear, 
that's where you can open and close your boot you lift it up on both the processes so lift the button up to open uh, and lift the button up again i believe to then close you've got your electric windows all round and you can lock the rear so only you can control them your door mirrors so you just flick it from the left to the right push your joystick anyway to move your mirrors you've got heated section which is great for the winter and power fold which will fold them in while you're driving if you're in a bit of a, a narrow spot so it's a start button ignition with this model so you need to make sure your foot is on the brake press and hold the button for the start stop and that will start the engine if you press the button without your feet on the pedals it will just turn the ignition on for you and when you've reached your destination you just press the button again and that will stop the engine So we've got your trip computer information in your eye line. You can use the silver scroll button to go up and down all the different pieces of information. And if there's words at the bottom, you've got three trips. So you push the scroll button in to go from since start, long term, and since refuel. And you've got how many fuels, uh, how many miles are left in the tank, and the nice popular one is your instant speedo. It will show you who's wearing a seatbelt in the back, so if that's not highlighted, you'll know somebody's not wearing one. Your front assist, that disappears after about 30 seconds of driving. Just let you know you've got that safety feature on the front of the car, which will break in the event of anything shooting out in front of you that you may not see for that split second. Then you've got your miles on your trip, and you can reset the trip down the bottom. Your time, which way you're headed, what gear you're in, your speedometer, your fuel, your revs, and your temperature. Now you've got these buttons here which are for your menu settings so if you don't want your trip computer information in your eye line you can change to have any of these different pieces of information the most popular ones tend to be the trip computer and your sat nav will come on automatically now your assistance systems which is also this button here that shows you that you've got cruise control which is on this uh, on your indicator and full beam stalk once it's on which you flick on the top you can then select, roll it down, and then push in on the scroll button to change it to speed limiter. Speed limiter works in a similar way to cruise control, but you would continue to have your foot on the accelerator. Then again, it's just showing you they have got your front assist on the car as well. So your cruise control, get up to the speed you want to do, take your foot off the accelerator and press set. You can increase or decrease the speed. If somebody cuts you up you can resume if you temporarily cancel it you can resume and if you turn it off and then on again you always have to start by pressing set and then of course we've got your indicators and your full beam which is push away or pull towards you which is a flash so on the right hand side you've got your windscreen wipers so it gives you the description on the side here down is just one quick wipe up is your automatic setting and you can control the speed of the wipe on the top here or you can override it to go and up another one to normal speed or high speed if you pull it towards you you'll get the jets at the front push it away once you'll get the wiper at the back push it away even more you'll get the water down the back then you've got your flappy paddles on the top here so you've got your plus and your minus going up or down the gears and then we've also got your horn in the middle and you've got your stereo controls with your heated steering wheel so it pops up in the top there and the more you press it you can just adjust the temperature so you've got volume up volume down or push into mute your voice control which will give you certain commands that you can control certain features of the car a lot of people don't tend to use it because it's whether or not you can get it to understand your tone or your accent but if you do and you're ever stuck you can just press help so voice control cancel cancel these are some of the features that you can use with voice control say if you can get it to work then you've got in between your radio stations or the tracks you listen to through your, your media and you can adjust the rake and the reach of the steering wheel by pulling the lever down on the left and then the steering wheel will come out as well as moving up and down and then you just pull it all the way back up to lock it in place 
So your armrest will slide forward and you've got different height settings on it as well. And then you just lift it up slightly and it will go back down. You've got one-handed bottle openers, a place to put your key, your 12 volt amp cap, which I'll show you in a moment, coin and card slots. You can take it out, flip it over and have a mat, or you can take it out and have a huge cubby on. So your traction control will always be on, which is just going to give you the best stability for the car uh, on the road. Um, your electric parking brake, you never need to turn that off. You just drive, accelerate, and it will automatically cancel. To apply, if you want to apply, you just lift it up and that will put the handbrake back on. Your auto hold is brilliant with the automatics. So when you move off, make sure that's highlighted. And then every time you come to a junction and you put your foot on the brake, your parking brake will show green. As long as that's green, you can take your foot off the brake and sit there comfortably until you need to accelerate off again. Always recommended to turn it off while you're trying to park and you'll soon find out why. And you've got mode select, so you can change the gear shift ratio, whether you want better efficiency, normal driving style, sport mode, and you can tailor it individually. We tend to like the steering in sport, so a bit more sensitive, and then eco in the drive. Depends on your driving style. So you can play around with that to your heart's content. And we've got your auto box. So you must have your foot on the brake, which shows you've got a green foot pedal there. So the gears won't change unless your foot is depressed on the brake pedal. Light goes out and then you can go into reverse, which is where you've then got your rear camera. So it will also bring up your front and your rear parking sensors. Gives you a guide to be able to uh, line into uh, parking space and you can see exactly where the back end of your car is as well, which is really handy. Then you've got neutral and drive and sport. So it will show you whether you're in drive or sport. At the moment we're, we're in eco mode in, uh, in the different mode settings, which you can change at any point by just pressing the mode button. So if you tap it down at any point, it will then flip you into sport mode. So it will just help give you um, uh, better acceleration if you want to overtake or for pulling away at a junction. You can go into manual mode by going up the gears or down the gears. Ultimately, the car will bring the car down the gears because it's a, an automatic and you can't stall an auto. But it won't go up the gears on its own. So if you, uh, if you do nothing, the car will end up screaming at you until you change gear. So if you're ever unsure, knock it over to normal drive. And it'll do everything for you. In your reverse mode, I've just noticed that you have also got these couple of extra features here, which will give you different guideline views. You've also got an overhead view for looking down the back of your car. You'll see your, your registration plate there. And you've also got, oh, there we go, uh, another rear view of the back of the camera as well. So plenty of different options to choose from with your parking. And you just pop it into park when you've parked up. You've got extra storage under here, so you've got somewhere to store your phone or some other bits and pieces. Your 12 volt amp, if you've got any other, anything else you want to charge up. Now the phones have changed the charge ports. So they used to be USB size, they're now USB-C size. So this is the same size that usually plugs into your actual phone. Um, so if you haven't got this style for your charge cable, you may need an adapter. And if you do, just let us know and we'll have a look, see if we've got any in stock. I believe they're about uh, £15. And you've got your start-stop system, which all modern cars have got. It will only stop the engine if it's got enough power to turn itself back on. So don't panic if it doesn't work every time. It's the car's way of protecting itself. You can pull the sensors up at any point, which will bring your camera up. And of course, then you've got your front and your rear parking sensors as well. Your hazards, your door lock and unlock, and it will let you know whether your passenger airbag is on or off every time you get in the car. And if you do need to turn the airbag off for medical reasons or if there's a child in the front, and you open the passenger door and on the inside of this piece here, you'll see a keyhole. And you just pop the key in, turn the key to off, and then it will switch the passenger airbag off for you. Just always make sure that it is turned back on when you've got an adult in there. 
Then we've got your heater system. So you've got your fan speed in the middle, your temperature control, and you can have a different temperature for the passenger until you press sync and then you will control both sides of the car. Then you've got up the top here where you want it directed to with your recirculation to shut the air vents off, stops any smell coming in the car. And you've got your three heat settings for both of the heated front seats. Your air con's down here. Auto takes it away from where you want it, sends it where it thinks it needs to go. A lot of people prefer where they like their, their air um, sent to. And then you've got your heated rear screen, maximum blast up your front screen, and you've also got rest. So once the heater's nice and warm, if you're just popping to the shop and you're not going to be long, get out of the car, turn the engine off, press rest. It will continue to kick the heat from the engine into the cabin until you return, keeping everything nice and toasty. You can also control everything by pressing menu up on the main screen. So at night, this is great. So until you get used to where all of the dials are in the dark, and this is absolutely brilliant. Because you've got where you want it directed to, you've got your sync button, you've got your different temperature controls for both sides. You've got your fan speed just on the side here, which is a slider, or you can press the fans and your air conditioning as well. Now they all come with the air care system, so there's a filter in the car. So as long as there's one bar on, the car will get rid of any dust or pollen in the vehicle. So it makes for a really clean driving experience. Brilliant for people who suffer with car sickness and hay fever. You get your double glove box, so you've got two buttons either side of each other, which will get you a little glove box in the top and a large one in the bottom, which is also air conditioned. Then we've got your stereo, so you've got three different clocks to choose from. Your power button. All of your features are in here, so it's nice and easily laid out, just like that apps that you get on your phone. Um, if, depending on what you want on the front screen while you're driving, you can either have an individual feature or you can have a split screen of a couple of features and you can add your favourites in as to what you actually want to see on there as well. So radio, you've got lots of pages to store all of your favourite radio stations. Because you've got digital radio, so you just find the radio station that you like. Once you've found one that you like, all you do is just press and hold the button Press the back arrow button, either override it on one of these, press and hold on an empty, and it's stored. Oh, it's just picked up there as well. We've got the uh, gesture control. So if you see the little hand at the side of the, the screen on any of the pages, then you can actually swipe your hand past the screen instead of having to touch it. Media is what you're listening to, so you click on source and it's either your radio, if you're connected to the internet, music from uh, media, so USB stick or then the most popular one which is your Bluetooth audio. And then you just play the details as it will pop up on the screen with the skip, repeat and shuffle. To pay your phone, turn your Bluetooth on and if you haven't got an iPhone make sure you're visible. And then go into your Bluetooth settings and you should have pop up Skoda 1843 and then select it. And then follow the instructions on the phone and the screen of here. Allow your contacts uh, and then it will bring up a couple of pages that look like your radio. So you will actually have two pages of these squares which will say add favourite. So all you do is you press add favourite, it will bring up all of your contacts. Find the contact you want, select it, and it will store it in your favourite contact boxes. So when you do want to ring someone, you just press your menu button, press your phone, and then press the square of the person you want to dial, and it will start ringing. If somebody rings you, it will come up in your eye line, the number as it's stored in your phone, or a number that you may not recognise, and it will then say accept. If you want to accept the call, you press the scroll button in, if you don't want to accept it, you can roll it to reject and then select reject, or it will come up on the screen with a red reject button as well. Smart link, 
So certain phones are now wireless. I believe iPhones are currently. Everything else you will need to plug in. Um, a lot of people tend to find SmartLink uh, very beneficial if they haven't got the higher spec cars because it allows them to utilize Google Maps through the stereo. But other features that are currently being, uh, being able to be used are Spotify, podcasts, um, iBooks, your, your music as well, text message service when stationary. So there's lots more features coming through. Then we come to vehicle. So this has got certain pieces of information about the car. So you've got vehicle status, what's going on with the car. So if any lights pop up on the dash, it will tell you in here what's going on with it. And you've also got your tyre pressure monitoring system as well, which lets you know if you've got a loss in pressure anywhere. If you do get a loss in pressure, make sure you pump them all up to the correct pressures. Uh, go in and then click uh, standard or fully loaded, tyre pressure is okay and you can reset in the settings. You've also got driving data, your three trip computers, and the car will get closer to the petrol station, the less fuel you've got. In settings, this is where you've got your tyre pressure monitoring system, uh, how long your lights stay on for when you've locked and unlocked, uh, unlocked it, uh, your tone and volume of your parking sensors. This is the nice one, depending on your mood, you can set everything depending on what colour you want, and strength. And then generally, footwell lighting I tend to put on about medium. And whatever colour you choose will filter through into your menu. And the LED strip on the inside of the car, which is more noticeable when you're driving around at night. Your mirrors and your wipers, how you want the car to lock and unlock for you, what information you see in your eye line. Never has it been easier to change the time and date. Ticket for winter, unticket for summer. What units you prefer, metric or imperial, and when your service is due. See so sat nav. If you press this little arrow button down here, you can then go into search for an address. So you can either put in the full address or you can put in a postcode. If you do put in a postcode, I would recommend storing the name uh, as something. Otherwise, it will just bring up these coordinates here. So select the address and then hit start. Or you can go into more and then pop a favorite on it and then store the name. And when you click start, please drive to the route shown. It will then pop up in your eye line telling you which junction, which turn you've got to do next, what time you'll get there and how long, uh, how many miles you're going to do. So you can move the map around and you can zoom in or out as well. Uh, Recentralize is the button over here and of course you've got your zoom button and then if you do want to you can also stop the destination. And when you go into this arrow button again you can go into your previous destinations as well. Then you've got your sound settings, so nice and uh, self-explanatory there, your volume, your bass, your treble, where you want it directed to and so on. Your driver assistance, which is the same button that you've got over here, which is just letting you know that on this model you have got the front assist and you can actually change the sensitivity of it if you wish. Don't recommend turning it off because insurance companies are now monitoring whether this is actually on or off if an, an accident ever does occur. Your air conditioning, which you can get into by pressing menu as well. You've got handy manuals. You can have a slideshow of your favourite photographs if they're on a USB stick, only when stationary. All of your legal terms about the computer itself. And then you've got users and your main settings. So you'll find a lot of the settings in some of the other features as well. Uh, users, this is for Skoda Connect. So it's free for the first year. So you may as well give it a go and see if you're going to see the benefit in it because they are trying to make things a bit more seamless, a bit, bit easier than when it first come out. They'll give you certain features to use by uh, downloading the My Skoda app on your phone for free. Uh, what you'll need to do is have both keys in the car, click into users and add a new user and then register. 
and then you'll put an email address in, put a password in, and you'll need to verify that through your email. Once you've done that, you can then use the features that are on the My Skoda app, uh, and that will allow you to find out where your car's parked, is the car locked or unlocked. Um, you can use honk and flash, uh, petrol stations, who they are and where they are. So lots of different features that you can use. So it is free for the first year. If you do see the benefit and you do find you're using it quite a lot, you can actually then go into shop and purchase it again after your three years up. So you've got your automatic dimming rear view mirror with this model. And you've got your lights in the top, so your extra side lights. You can put the rear lights on on their own instead of you having to worry about it distracting you in the front. You can have your lights on with the doors. You've got a nice storage for your sunglasses. I'll let you fight over who's going to be using that. And then you've got your SOS button, which is standard and it's battery life for 14 years. Um, hopefully you never need it, but if you ever see an accident, you can press it. There is a black box in the car with a GPS system in, so they'll know exactly where to get to you. Um, if you're ever involved in an accident, and heaven forbid you never are, uh, if you don't press the button and any of the airbags go off, they will actually speak to you in the vehicle because they get notified. And if nobody speaks back, they know how many seatbelts are being worn so they can get to you even faster as a response time, which is absolutely incredible. Then you've got your breakdown service, which is for three years with Skoda. And then you've got Skoda customer services. If there was ever anything that you weren't happy about or if you, if you wanted to, to give any... Uh, uh, any recommendations for anything in the future. I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. At Skoda, we are committed to the well-being of our customers and staff. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we will be introducing some new measures. But rest assured, we will continue to offer the high level of service you have come to expect from us. At the moment, we have to do things a little differently. So we're asking you to book a timed appointment with us and to help keep everyone safe. Only visit us if you and your household are free from COVID-19 symptoms and if you're not self-isolating due to government guidance. There are many ways to view and experience our range. We continue to welcome virtual appointments where we can share information with you about our range and help you decide on the right Skoda for you. We aim to make any appointments at our showroom as efficient as possible whether these are to view or test drive or to hand over your new Skoda. You'll notice some differences at our Skoda retailers to help ensure the safety of our staff and customers. To ensure we keep a minimum of two meters apart, parking areas have been marked asking you to park in every other bay, leaving plenty of space for other customers. And we've adapted the layout of our showrooms and vehicle displays. We're committed to keeping the sales experience contactless wherever possible. Our team will explain each step of the way, including advice on how best to clean your part exchange vehicle before inspection and handover. Our team will give you all the information you need ahead of your appointment and afterwards. We'll be online or at the end of the phone to help with any questions or queries you might have. Let's continue the journey together, safely.